Hello, and as many of you asked, today we're going to talk about UI and creating different UI components and elements with Overlap 2D. Let me just open a test project here. And basically, uh, we're going to cover several topics today. Uh, I'm not going to talk about, uh, you know, default libgdx UI, something like text fields, checkboxes, select boxes, and things like that. Uh, uh, if you want to use them, you can. You can drag them and then import styles from the uh, from here, and uh, that should probably work. This is not the recommended way. So we're, we're going to talk about something different. Uh, we're going to cover dialogues, buttons, and labels, and you can do many things with those, and those are very important to uh, the game dev. So let me just delete this one and. Uh, before we start, uh, I should probably direct you to this page, which is uh, developerandroid.com tools help a draw ninepatch HTML. Uh, here you can find a great tool for creating a ninepatch images. Ninepatch images are uh, basically crucial, crucial for UI, because uh, you need a stretchable backgrounds and items uh, for dialogues or buttons. You can't do without them. Uh, oh given that you've already did this and familiar with ninepatch and do have several nine patches let me just show you initial resources here um, so uh, so I get got some images to start with those are some buttons with pressed and not pressed states and some nine patch images you can see those black borders here just specify uh, the location uh, of let me just turn this off. Yeah, the location of uh, stretchable parts, stretchable areas, and I did this for several of images, as well as got some fonts for us to test with. You can see those are TTF fonts, and those are supported by version 004 of Overlap. So those are already imported into your project. If you're creating an empty project, you should import the fonts from here, and nine pages through just images. Uh, so let me just demonstrate how this works. This image is a nine patch image, and when I choose a scaling and drag it around, this is what happens. It doesn't. It does stretch, smart, and this already can be a background for dialogue or something. We can use this, or the same happens with this. And here it's it's it can be stretchable. And if you want to see the difference of what I'm talking about, let's just add those two buttons on the screen and you see um, if I stretch this one like like so uh, you will see it's kind of ugly and the border stretch too and this is not what you expect and when you do the same with this green one that is a nine patch item I can just stretch it all the way and it looks perfect uh, so you can create buttons with these things and let me just show you well, to create the button uh, you need obviously to use fonts and you do this by going to UI and choosing a label element which now uses TTF fonts you see it's a small label and it puts some default uh, uh, label style is basically a font name here uh, and you can choose a size let's put something like 48 or maybe 88 something like this uh, and you can also stretch this just to you know fix it a little bit uh, and put it on a button and then you can change your color just like this and create the UI elements you need this is much better than just using a standard button with text and backgrounds because it gives you a flexibility of adding uh, different stuff uh, let me show you on examples first of all I created already some ready buttons here let's drag and drop this green button from the library here it is, and you can see uh, I made it, uh, it's a composite item, and it has several layers. So I made a text layer where I put the text, and there is a pressed layer and normal layer, besides the default layer, and there is also the effect layer. The important layers here are pressed and the normal layers. Uh, if we just hide the text for you to see different things, this those are pressed and not pressed states for the buttons. So this is the normal state, and this is the pressed state. And we put them both uh, on, sc on screen, like positioned like this, and then the rest of the magic of, you know, changing 
the layer visibility is going to happen from our code with iScript. I'm going to show you that later. Uh, so besides that, I have a dialog here that does use those buttons and you can see it has a title and a description there and those all, uh, if you go inside, they all have uh, like t names and identifiers. Those buttons uh, are here from the library uh, and I'll show you later how you can change text it and customize them. Uh, so that being said, uh, let's get to the coding part. I already covered previously in other video tutorials uh, of the asset management part. So if you didn't watch that, go ahead and watch that first. From the new stuff, uh, so this is a simple libgdx project set up again with the overlap to the runtime included. And the new stuff here that comes from version 004 is default asset manager. Default asset manager is whatever uh, it implements the i resource and it what I expected uh, you to implement if you want to make your own asset manager but you as well can just use the default asset manager that comes with the runtime and it loads the project the way they are exported from your editor so if you go to export settings and specify where you want your things go and if you specify uh, all of those fields like your assets folder and then if you export that thing uh, what you will get is a standard distribution of assets here uh, directly into your project from the editor and so if you use a default asset manager you will be able to load all of those you just need to specify the particle names you have any or maybe the animations here and then you call load data and it works like that so we're creating a scene loader and then loading the main scene data file which is this basically and then we add uh, the main actor. That's all. So if if I run this now, it should display this dialog. And if you click on the buttons, nothing will happen. Now, if you want the buttons to behave like buttons, you need to write an script for that. And I already did one. I wrote a simple button script here. Let's take a look. Uh, well, uh, at this moment, the runtime doesn't come with the script, so uh, I actually posted it here uh, in this tutorial you will be able to find it out with this link and you can reuse this code for now but later I'm pretty sure we're going to put this inside the runtime so you will be able to extend it and make your own scripts uh, in short basically what simple button script does is uh, it adds listener like uh, touch down and touch up listeners and change the visibility of layers with set layer visibility function of composite item and that's mainly it, it allows you to add your own listeners and also uh, we'll get back to this text part a little bit later so at this moment if we just uh, add the script here uh, you can see that we're adding a script to dialog and we, we need to get the dialog from the screen then we add the script to all the elements that are prefab from green button name inside the dialog and you can see it uses reflection to create an instance of your script there are many ways to do it again you can just create your own instance and attach it to uh, only one button but because we're having several buttons here two buttons that's why I'm writing it like this so yeah let's save this and run and you can see uh, it is already clickable so we can click on the buttons and they go kind of inside uh, but that's not uh, basically what we wanted because maybe I want to turn off be able to turn th this button isn't like default button right it's a bit of a special button uh, so it has like text in it that needs to be uh, resized and some particle effects uh, and the other thing is that because we have uh, we want to have different texts here I'm currently using custom variables here to specify the text key and you can see that it's different for buttons this says got it and the other says ok so let's close this and um, uh, that's why you can see that the simple script checks if we have the text custom variable there and if we do and if we have a text label inside the button we're going to change its value and alignment accordingly um, so uh, yeah 
Now, so what else is important here? Let's see this fancy green button script. I extended the simple button script and you can do the same for your fancy buttons and uh, it will extend the functionality but add something else like uh, setting visibility for your particle effects uh, as well as using the scale uh, changes when pressed for text. So if uh, I run this now with the fancy green button effect you can see that label resizes too and I can change it by setting the effect visibility to false and now effect will not show by default but those are normal buttons um, so the other part I wanted to cover here is that uh, those if you want to create some other uh, elements besides the buttons uh, like uh, text fields or checkboxes or anything, you can use the same logic here. You can write your own uh, scripts and uh, decide on your own rules on how you will layer those inside the composite items and stuff like that. In the future I hope we can standardize that in future versions of Overlap and uh, let me show you this. Uh, you probably already tried to click on like right click on a composite item and see this convert to button thing and it doesn't do anything right now uh, so probably a bit frustrated here but the main idea here is when in, in future versions when you click on it it will automatically create those pressed and normal layers inside the composite item and attach or already attach the button I script to it which is which will come bundled with the runtime so you will not have to write this these two lines, this one line here and it will all work out of the box by just pressing convert to um, button button. so that's that um, I guess that is all I wanted to cover here you can also read the full tutorial here and download the code snippets and I will also put the uh, project that I made, the test overlap 2D project, so you can reuse that as well as the resources. Uh, hopefully that makes sense and I would love to hear more in the comments. Thank you for your time and have a nice day.